Hello again, Commander Exegius here. Let's look at the next in our series on engineering, the best ways to gather materials, data, and minerals. As this is a general guide, we're not going to focus on specific items, but rather some best practices to use while gathering. Let's start by looking at the best ships and builds to use for gathering. With the exception of gathering during combat, you'll want something with a good jump range, room for an SRV, a wake scanner, and a cargo rack and collector limpet controller. Oh, and don't forget to restock limpets via advanced maintenance before you go. I generally use my Asp Explorer for this. If you're going to gather during combat, take the most capable combat ship you own, being sure to install a cargo rack and at least a 3A collector limpet controller. This is one of the few times I use a large ship, generally a Corvette. A few builds are down below. Now that we're ready to head out, let's look at a few of the most useful places in the galaxy, Dav's Hope and Site 426. Both are small, abandoned outposts about 350 light years from Seoul. Dav's Hope is very popular, with Site 426 far less so. Either way, you'll want to go in solo so you don't compete with another commander for the materials. Once you've scanned their beacons, they'll show in your navigation panel. You'll have to navigate to the coordinates on your first visit in the description below. Once you land at either, jump into your SRV and start making laps around the inner perimeter where there are about a dozen material drop points. On each loop, be sure to scan the data beacon. At the time of this tutorial, you can acquire data on every scan, however many times you'll only be able to scan it once per week. The materials on the ground range from grade 1 through grade 4, but as they drop in copious amounts, you'll want to run this loop as many times as you can stand, or until you fill up on some of the materials. I generally run this for a few hours, as I'll have a large inventory to use with the material traders later on. Next up, let's look at methods to gather data. While DAVs in Site 426 can be excellent resources, there are a few other methods you'll use based on what you're looking for. Some of those are scanning ships at a resource extraction site or compromised nav beacon. You don't need to engage the ships, just lock them as a target and point your ship at them until the scan is complete, watching the bottom left panel until it stops spinning. You'll get data from around 25% of the ships, but it doesn't take long to get a good bit by either bounty hunting or just by scanning. Another way to get data is by scans at planetary outposts. These are the bases with plus symbols in their names. The excellent ED Pathfinder tool can help you locate these and will give you a map of the base showing you where the various data points you'll need to scan are. You can tell ED Pathfinder what you're looking for, where you are, and what type of bases you'd like to scan, and it will create a route for you. There is some data, like data mine wake exceptions, that you can only obtain by using a wake scanner on high wake signals. These can best be obtained at a distribution center in a famine system. Just use eddb.io to find the closest famine system to you and check for a distribution center. Note that not all famine systems will have one, so look at high population systems and also remember they will only show when you are within 1000 light seconds of them. Now we'll need to get some minerals. There are two methods to use here. The first traditional method is to hop in your SRV and do some surface mining. Again, we'll use the Bodies tab on eddb.io to find the closest planet with the highest drop rates for the minerals you're looking for. While you can find planets with multiple minerals, even Grade 5, I suggest looking for these on an individual basis as you'll find higher drop rates for single minerals rather than combining. There is, however, a far faster way, and that's to use the Crashed Anaconda on Arrear 2B, coordinates on screen and below. Once again, we'll need to use our planetary navigation to find the location but once there, scan the data cache in the ship so it will show in your navigation panel in the future. Once you arrive at the crash, I suggest taking a small ship as it's a very narrow ravine. Jump in your SRV and look for the three cargo racks in the very rocky area. Destroy each one with your turret and one or two rare minerals such as antimony, ruthenium, tellurium, or tungsten will spawn. Once you've destroyed all three and grabbed their booty, log out and back into solo and repeat the process. Like Dav's Hope and 426, you'll want to repeat this over and over as long as you can as these will be very valuable at the materials trader later on. Now that you've made your first pass of gathering base materials, let's head to the material traders, raw, encoded, and manufactured, one by one and trade for what we need. You'll want to have created your shopping list using the excellent ED Engineer, which we've covered in a previous tutorial. Trade for the Grade 5 materials, minerals, and data you need, ensuring you don't accidentally give away some of the lower level ones you also need. Once you've traded all you can, you'll likely have a short list of items remaining that you'll need to use the previous methods to gather. There is one type of gathering we haven't yet covered, and that's the dreaded high-grade unknown signal source 
or USS. While these can be miserable to find and one of the worst game mechanics I've ever seen, there are a few things we can do to make this more efficient. First, you'll want to use Inara to find the best system type for your material. Just go to Inara, Engineers, Components, and find the specific component you're looking for, like Core Dynamics Composites in our example. You'll see these have a higher chance of spawning in federal systems in Boom State, so then fire up EDDB.io, go to Systems, and find a federal system in Boom. Once you arrive in System, lock the primary star as a target, put it at your back, and head off at a roughly 45 degree angle from the plane of the star system. You'll want to enter the Deep Space SOI, which will show in the bottom left panel of your HUD. Keep on flying until you get to about 11,000 light seconds out. Once you're on your way, open your left panel, go to Filters, and enable only stars and signal sources. Once you get to 11,000 light seconds, turn and face the star and throttle down to about 1C. Once you've done this, open your left panel and wait. Here the wonderful gameplay design of Frontier shines through. You'll enjoy staring at your panel until you see unknown signal source pop up. When you do, throttle down immediately, select it as your target, and point your ship at it. It will quickly scan to show you what type of USS it is. While we can find something useful in encoded, we want to focus on high grade only. Fortunately, these usually contain three to five materials, with each giving you three of that material. These are very valuable with the material traders, so you want to pick up as many of these as you can while enjoying this wonderfully exciting gameplay. There is one final way to gather manufactured materials and data that is actually quite fun, and that's combat. Outfit a PvE-capable combat ship with a cargo rack and collector limpets. I suggest a 3A minimum. Open your cargo hatch, send out your collectors, and start shooting. With our high limits on materials, you can just let them pick up everything they see. Again, these will be useful later on when we visit the material traders. While there are other ways to gather materials, data, and minerals, these are the methods most veteran pilots use and they should have you stocked up in no time. I can generally gather all the materials I need to fully grade 5 a ship in about 5 to 6 hours, and while that's not short, usually that's only a couple play sessions for most commanders. Hopefully these methods will have you well on your way to engineering the ship of your dreams quickly. In a future tutorial, we'll look at the best modules and blueprints to use in those builds. For now though, this has been Commander Exegius, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching.